The thing that I most appreciate about writing poetry is the ability to tell the truth. Um, um, I don't write poetry unless it's true to me and I don't have to have it published. I was a, I was a professional writer where my income was dependent upon getting things published. I didn't have to do that with poetry. So I could, I could tell the world as I see it. And that is really the beauty of poetry for myself. Sunset. This orange sky like no sky has the right to be. Its juicy color smeared across the horizon. Sunlight pouring through wispy clouds like water splashing from a fountain. The blue bay, normally the main event, bows its wavy head humbled. And we are drawn from the dinner table to stare out the window like animals in a cage at feeding time. What that says to me is like, you know, people want to know what does a poem mean? You know, I want to, I want to, it's not a math problem, right? I mean, the poet is not trying to hide anything from us. He's trying to say what he wants to say, probably in as few words and as clearly as he can. Um, but a poem is not an essay. It's not a novel. It's not a short story. It's a different way of talking to us. And, you know, in this poem he talks about, I want the reader to water ski, water ski across the surface of a poem. The poem is big. The poem is multifaceted. You can listen to a poem. You can touch a poem. You can feel it. You can, you can, listen, you can talk to it. Um, there's a lot there. Um, and it speaks to each of us individually. And what it means to you is possibly different than what it means to me. And it doesn't make your reading any wrong, wronger or not right. Um, you find what you find in the poem. It's a poem I wrote uh, December, I think, around Christmas. It's called Autumn View of Backyard in Twilight. The cardinal startles upon his return, a flash of color on the spindly lilac, the softer hue of his mate chittering in the swales of fallen leaves piled against the fence. Unnoticed in the greening season, they've returned to this colorless world like drops of crimson on Shen Shu's feeling of rain. Is it no wonder you become more beautiful the longer we are together? Your smile, your touch, fluttering amidst the brush of my life, through a fading landscape unfurled, a monochrome spotted by delight and signed with a seal, no longer mine alone. You know, I start somewhere with an image or a thought or a feeling. Uh, Billy Collins, who was the U.S. Poet Laureate, I don't know, or early in the 2000s, he, was, he talked about how he didn't like to write poetry on assignment. You know, like perhaps the Poet Laureate might be asked to write a poem about the rechristening of an old church or something like that. He didn't like that because he liked to follow the poem where the poem led him. And so that's, I think probably most poets would say that. I certainly do. I started with the Cardinal. I ended up with the love of my wife. I would have never thought that that's where that poem was leading. So that's a good example. It's called The Poet's House. The Poet's House is not carpeted in rhyme. It is just bare floor, honeyed by polish and care. Except those spots scuffed and dull where the poet's homely feet turn the lines of his pacing again and again. The walls are wide and spare, free of meter and verse, wide swaths of emptiness where the cracks of time, faded colors, and shifting lines inspire more than any paintings by the dead. In the basement, dark and dank, is where the good stuff's kept, jumbled in piles behind pillar and stair, 
boxes and bags and heaps of things that please and scare, treasured finds and bits that bleed and stink, those too. The poet's stash has a little of everything. The windows of this house let in light and more, a world outside and in, the glimpse of a tree dewy in the mist, the scent of Japanese cedar, the faces of people walking on the sidewalk, walking through their lives and ours. The poet's house is our house, writers and readers and hangers on even, anyone who hears the music on the page, the tears that stain it, the rage that tears it, the voice which speaks it to a listener, unknown and far away. Anyone can have a room in this house. Yeah, the, my poems, I have never, uh, I've been in poetry workshops and I've done readings, but I've never uh, submitted poems for publication or in contests up to this point. Um, because, you know, having been a published writer, I mean, poetry was my, like, my secret, like, thing. I just did it for myself. And there was a freedom in writing for myself. I didn't have to think about a reader, even though a reader is implied in writing poetry. Um, so, I haven't. And that is, um, that is one of the opportunities I have uh, with being a poet laureate, to, to, to walk in that public sphere with my poetry. I am going to have a chapbook published this year, um, but I'm just beginning to share my poetry. So, And a little love poem. Laughter like a temple bell. My wife is easy with her laughter, generous with her smiles, no matter the dumb things I do or say to get a rise. I could be the worst comic in the world and she'd be the audience that claps and shouts for an encore. I don't know whether it's love or resignation that makes her light up so at my jokes, and does it really matter? Because to me, her laughter is a ladder to heaven that I can't climb fast enough. I think what inspires me is a big variety of things. Sometimes I want to just capture a moment, a simple moment, and I, poetry is a way to do that. Bus stop magic. Waiting at the bus stop is all about magic. If looking up the street impatiently, anxiously doesn't work, try looking down the street, affecting indifference imagining the bus will take you by surprise. If counting cars doesn't work and stomping your booted feet or smacking your mittens together has no effect, then it's time for magic. Time to start saying Hail Marys. First a quick one, then a slow, deliberate, and reverent one, then five or 10, or maybe 14, if that is how old you are. Then when you are so cold, your bare legs are numb from your knee socks to the white cotton underwear under your uniform skirt, say the Hail Mary backwards. This will be very difficult with many false starts, but the magic always works, and the bus will likely come even before you finish because that magic is just so strong. Let me think of what, what else inspires me. Oh, memory. Certain memories that linger, they're right there. Uh, that, that inspires me. Love, the, uh, very much love. It's titled, What I Know of Him I Love. His name was Francis Harmatus. What I know of him I love, and this is all I know of him. He walked to the barn on Christmas Eve at midnight, singing hymns, because he believed that was the only time when animals could talk. 
He worked in a factory until a machine cut off three fingers. Wrapping his hand in rags, he sat in the foreman's office until evening when he was fired. He found another job using a wheelbarrow balanced with leather straps from his shoulder to his mangled hand. On Sundays, he took the cow down to the water to wash it. While it stood placidly in the stream, he reclined, resting on the river bank, reading his prayer book. He died the year I was born, but in the village that knew him, an old woman once told me, your grandfather's laughter was well known in this village and now you are laughing like him. So I cherish his laughter as my own. One of the fun things I do that inspires me to write poetry is I listen. And I, I listen to people and sometimes what they say is a poem and I'll just jot it down in the barest form. I call those my overheard poems. The name of this poem is The Produce Man. I had only seen him empty cardboard crates of fruit and answer questions about exotic vegetables. Till back behind the apples, I saw the produce man. I saw him kneel to retrieve torn pieces of lettuce next to the cooler. He grabbed its cold white edge, gripped the bin to steady himself, threw one leg straight out, then awkwardly bent the other. White apron stiff, smooth face stoic, he looked up and said, it hurts worse getting up. Probably I write when the spirit moves me, when I have an experience that I want to capture on paper, and, or sometimes just because something's in my head and I want to get it out. An important thing for my writing is feedback from my writing group. Uh, it meets twice a month. And I don't like to go there empty-handed. Uh, there's a wonderful discussion and critique of each other's work. So that's part of my process. I will take the time to write something uh, to take with me to the writer's group. This one is called, If I Burn the Popcorn. When I was afraid to drive through Chicago, pulling a clanking trailer behind, just go around the block to see how it feels, you said. Start out and take it easy. Anytime you get afraid or think you just can't do it, pull over. I'll come get you. If I burn the popcorn, you would probably say, I like it a little toasty. If I forget to pay a bill, you would probably say, it happens to everyone. If my movie is not for you, you would probably say, I'll just listen to the game. I find you very reassuring. Well, sometimes you get a whole lot of something condensed and focused. And uh, y you can get just zapped when you uh, hear or read a poem, uh, zapped with a idea or a feeling. I think it was the poet Donald Hall said, uh, the poet is the scholar of one candle. And I, what I take that to mean is that poetry can help you focus right in on something in life or some human experience focus right in on it with some intensity. I think that's a, a, a wonderful experience.